<laughs> I know, right? Ooh, we made it. We made it. Oh, no. Let's wait for John because he's a, yes. he's a little confused too. Oh, I remember seeing some of the chemicals. Everyone, you want to say hi? Hello. Hi. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop it as soon as the book drops, which is right
you're on my vlog. Oh, oops, sorry. Yeah, on my vlog. What is up? <laughs> Honestly, do, you, do you have a like a, a you an opening for your videos, or you're like, hey, I'm Leo? Or um, you? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> let me let me see if I can create one. Yeah. What is up? This is Leo, and he says, stay fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Thanks. Yeah, nice to meet you, Leo. All right, bye. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh my gosh, would you believe this? Okay. Wow. Would you look at that? Hey Henry. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next up. Last time with that big punk, you were just breaking the rules, but now we can't believe it. But, yeah, there we gotta move on, sir. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I was sitting on the Innovation Hub and very excited about Metaverse and I'm excited about NFTs and I'm excited about creators being able to really own content in a different way because if you think about it, you know, Facebook owns your content. Like if you're putting your content on Facebook, it's there. If you're putting it on TikTok, it's there. It, it doesn't belong to you. It's on the platform. The platform is making money off of it. Yeah, I'm actually going to let you guys. Are you guys? Yeah, we're going to meet you guys. Hey, what's up? Hi. How are you doing today? Thanks for coming to my channel. Yeah, it was a lot better, but I can't believe it. Oh, yeah! I'm so excited. Hi, my name is Hunter. Hi. Yeah, I'm the family. Maybe 400 YouTubers, and wow. maybe would you like to collab or make friends? Uh, I'll check you out. Yeah, sure. Stay fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. I will try to stay fabulous, Leo. It was nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, it's great to meet you. Too. Have a good one. And you're also on my uh, vlog too. Oh heck yeah! What's up, vlog? <laughs> yeah. That felt like a surprise at the end. But yeah. <laughs> I can't even talk about what I was doing in high school, but if 12 million people are watching this, my mom wouldn't be as proud. Uh, she is a uniquely authentic creator who is dedicated to showcasing her truest self on social media. Ari is beloved for her quirky and incredible candid short form content. You may know her as Taser Girl, as she has repeatedly gone viral for brandishing a taser in shockingly hysterical comedy videos. Ariana is intelligent, energetic, and unapologetically authentic. Yes! I think I think we can be loud. Josh? I was the guy who yelled up. Uh, Hey Red, what's up with Tokyo? Uh, yeah, um, anyways, uh, I'm Leo. Leo, great to meet you, buddy. Josh. Thank you so much for coming. Friendly, you know, was a good month morning, and then yeah, you guys yeah. are, you know, spread out with uh, the whole kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the first picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, Oh, my God. 
Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I think I have this camera too, actually. Really? Hello, Leo's vlog. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is this great for me to still make money every month? Have fun. You too. High five. High five. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your first day? Really tired, back to the and greets, but it was good. I'm still excited for tomorrow, but yeah. Oh, yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a lot of fun. Especially the end of the Yeah, so we're getting ready. <laughs> I don't know if you can record it.
everybody, it's me, something else for our team. Guys, how are you feeling tonight? Good. Uh, we couldn't come up with a team name, so we just used Fortnite Battle Pass. Is that good enough? All right. Fortnite Battle Pass. All right. So, um, Circle, you guys are coming off of a win at our MomoCon show. Yes, uh, you sir. and Adam. Do you think you can keep the streak going? I think we got it. I think I think it's gonna be pretty easy. Sure. Yeah, we're we're practiced. Yeah. We got All right. It. We're okay. He's All right. Gotta, he gotta defend his title. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. All right. So let's get to our second team. Our second team is none other than 8-Bit Ultra Ivan Animated Cipher Dead, the one and only Odd Ones Out. Hello, how's it going? Guys, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? I'm doing good. <laughs> oh, I have to... Uh... Yeah! <laughs> yeah! I thought we were introducing ourselves, not how we were feeling. I'm feeling great. Good, good. Yeah! <laughs> Uh, Den, you were in one of our live stream versions of the show. How does this, how does it feel doing the in person? Wait, I wanted to answer the how am I feeling. Oh, yeah, I oh, wonder how you're feeling. Alright. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really fun, so excited to try and lose again. Woo! <laughs> Self sabotage? Lose. Yeah, We're gonna you? win, please. Please. <laughs> I'm feeling alright. Can I get a crowd cheer to feel a little better? Thank you guys. Alright, uh, what'd you like? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Please, please don't do that. <laughs> I don't like the sound of those muscles. You should go into the first round. Yeah, I do. Like, yeah. You guys ready to go into the first round? <laughs> the first game is gonna be Fanatic Fusion. What we need from you guys are two characters from pre-existing shows, movies, whatever. These guys are going to have to draw the best fusion of those two characters based on like their memories, uh, vision of what those two guys look like. No preferences. It's just completely the brain. That's the only reference we have. All right. If our wonderful production assistant Polly can come and take the mic and go get some suggestions from people in the audience, we'll see. We have a lot of hands. <laughs> Uh, Dumbledore and Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur <laughs> from one person, and then, yes. Scooby-Doo and Homer. <laughs> Alright, so we'll do, we'll do Bulbasaur and Scooby-Doo. We need one from each of you. So, is, that, is everyone ready? Yeah. Wait, wait, are we doing, are we doing everyone doing the same song? Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. <laughs> Alright. Oh, so, uh, teams, decide who's going to draw first. <laughs> okay. okay. Alright, James and 8-Bit are going to go. Who's going for this team? Let's get a Pokemon. Okay. You use a ball star? Yeah. We can. Let's go. Yeah, Baron and Harry, the first two teams are going up, do one side of a drawing, and then the second team goes up doing Scooby-Doo. So, first two people going up is doing Bulbasaur, second two people going up is Scooby. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Is is everyone ready? Are we on, on hand with the timer? Yes! Alright, okay. Can we have a countdown, guys? Five, four, three, two, one! Go! was five hours for six seconds. <laughs> All right, five hours for six seconds. Uh, take us through your uh, your your thing here. <laughs> yeah. Well, this beautiful baby boy of ours uh, is Bulba Doba Do. <laughs> He's got a cool S on it. He's eating the Pokemon snacks. It's a mixture of Scooby snacks and Pokemon. He's uh, very lovable. He evolves. He evolves into a different. Better looking one of them is. Okay, so he's ugly. 
Now, I, I can't help but notice his name, Boba Doba Do. Uh, isn't that kind of sounds like Yabba Dabba Do? Did you accidentally make a Flintstones reference? <laughs> I mean, you know, we just included all kind of character references here. Okay, I see. I, see. I especially like the vestigial shaggy head throwing from the bowl. <laughs> you know, I can't really explain what that is. Okay. All right. Uh, let's, now, what about the other thing? Guys, could you please explain? He has to scooping snacks. Can I first um, say how good this uh, cat with an onion is on? Stop my gosh, Rush. It's so good for making me cry. It's so good. mean. It's so good. Silence. Thank you for that, Rush. Yes, we have what we would like to let's call the Scooby Sword. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! Why did we think of that? That's crazy. We just uh, took it quite literally. We just decapitated poor Scooby <laughs> and just stuck it on the body of a Bulbasaur. All right, as God intended. <laughs> okay, so should we see who got, who do you guys think of better? All right, let's cool for team. What's your guys' team name again? Two you, hours. You can change it. You can just keep going up. Ten hours for three okay, seconds. Okay, forty <laughs> hours for three seconds. Can we give it to them? Yeah. 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 And for team uh, Fortnite Battle Pass. Oh, we almost had a, a conflict in, in the middle of the show floor just now. Alright, well. And James is putting out the box of love! I I have practice. Oh, alright. <laughs> All right, guys. Right, so this round's gonna get a little bit more interesting. This is just the first round. You think this is crazy? Wait until we use the wheel. Uh, should we should we go and choose the two? Yes. Uh, so yeah. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. You in the red hoodie right there? Yeah. You come on up. No. Uh, then we're gonna do the wheel spin, and then uh, blue hat. Aww. Come on up. Alright, uh, if you would like, give the wheel a spin to determine what's going to actually happen. Show mercy, please. <laughs> Alright, three, two, one. A few minutes later. Okay. Yeah, so spin the wheel. Oh, um. 
All right. <laughs> um, Fortnite Battle Pass. Uh, tell us about the pressed turtle coin. So despite him having a dump truck butt. <laughs> See this tear? This tear is not a tear. Are, it's are you guys okay? Yo, <laughs> oh, no. Slow, 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 slow. The line's right here. The line's right here. I know, right? Would you believe this? Is there some kind of a conspiracy here? Really? How about he carries three million dollars in the backpack and I chase him? Oh. oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! like a creator economy where some creators can like make money on the internet yeah. we were like what welcome to the party we've been doing this for a bit yeah. um, and uh you know i'm excited I, I, i've been at youtube over eight years and, and i stay there because i really appreciate the value of the company like really trying to do the right thing by creators like 15 years ago we started sharing revenue with creators uh, on their videos 15 years yeah, since that target program started. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah, I think the next era that we're moving into is, you know, a lot of people are talking about multiple formats. And, you know, whether it's short form, long form, whether you want to do image posts with memes or live streams or, uh, you know, live shopping seems to be something that's coming up as a trend. I heard uh, in October, there was a creator in China that sold almost $2 billion worth of... Uh, of lipstick or makeup, whatever. Yeah, yeah in lipstick. one day. Yeah, which is crazy if you haven't. Uh, that's actually true if you want to Google it, read about it. Uh, and actually, what I was thinking, because they don't kick this off, if any of my friends out there, if you want to just text me some questions, ask him, or text me things you want me to talk about, that would be fun.
actually a singer. Okay. You can go. Next one is you? Yeah. yeah. I'm just holding this camera. Wait. He was ready. <laughs> Thank you so much. I 
Yeah. 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 I'm Leo Wang, the fabulous Leo Wang. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice. Awesome. Nice to meet you. Leo Wang. I love all your music videos with uh, other YouTubers singing together. Oh, yeah. Especially with Bethy Moda and... Um, I miss Bethy Moda. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was really, that was some awesome videos, man. And uh, I, we all miss Christy Kermy. I even went to her, uh, her grave one time and crossed some flowers. Yeah? Yeah, I, oh, I care for her. Thank you. Yeah, it's, but, it's crazy, but, eh? But anyways, uh, I believe music is what brings you guys together. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, are we close together? Of course, yeah, let's do it. Here's the city, I just want to see it. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, for, no. You know, music makes me not just happy and also we all stick together like a family too. Totally. But, but yeah, yeah um, may I tell you something crazy? Of course, yeah. Fun fact, I met 98 YouTubers to this day. Yeah? You, now 99. Awesome. But, uh, I wanted to be 99. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to maybe collab and maybe become friends in the future? Oh, uh, man. I'm, I'm, a, uh, I, I'm always down for doing crazy stuff. Do you yeah. play music? Do you, what, what do you do? Uh, um, I like singing, you know, you know, casually. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. I love this quote, by the way. Stay fabulous. The fabulous awesome. Leo Wayne. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. And also, you're on the uh, vlog, too. Oh, oh what's yeah. up? What up, yeah. internet? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's great. Awesome, man. Yeah, it's great to meet you, man. It's great meeting you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank yeah. Oh, well, dude. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to Prime. I'm going to Prime. Okay. So yeah, yeah I'll see you out there. Hi, um, sorry, I have, I have too many phones right now, but uh, no worries. But yeah. Bye, Molly. It's good to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Leo. Hi. Nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. How's it going? Hi. Great. And uh, yeah, this is my vlog camera. Hi, vlog. Yeah, and um, I was at your uh, earlier panel with uh, Kurt Hugo Schneider. Awesome. And, uh, Did you enjoy it? I totally enjoyed it. I'm so glad. Thank you for being here. But fun fact, though, I love um, you know, having you know, I enjoy singing. You know. That's great. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. And um. I, I have a great conversation with Kurt, you know, and uh, I love how, you know, music makes, you know, how do I say this, reunite YouTubers and creators together, you know, in a happy place. And also, it really is a small, small world. Indeed it is. It's so nice to meet you. Thanks for saying but hi. But yeah, and also a, a couple of things. So, uh, sorry, sorry. That's okay. Sweet green. Uh, uh, where is that? No, no, not this. What? There it is. Selfie together? That's it. Awesome. Is it okay? We can. Yeah, sure. Watch your sense of thunderman. Oh, thank you. That's it. Ready? Oh, oh, yes. Uh, can you take it from me? Um, mine is a uh, kind of bit. Uh, no, you can take it with my phone. Yeah. Mine is a uh, kind of bit uh, blurry. Could it try it again? Oh yeah. Oh, is it is it okay if you could do this? Oh, same with mine. We gotta go in a better light. Okay, let's do another one. Ready? Really? Yeah. We need to go in another lighting. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. We need to go in another lighting because it's okay. all bad. I think it's a lighting in here. Uh, my I, yeah, my stuff, sir. There we go. Here, go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll do you first. Yeah. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Hey, how do I look? Check. 
Um, Ram. So so sorry. Uh, the, 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. There you go. All right. But yeah. That's anyway, the one. Then yeah. I need one. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. It's Let's fine. do it. Here. Yep. One last thing though, um, would you like to collab and maybe become friends in the future? I don't really collaborate with people usually. My, I, I like to do my little work in my little studio all on my own, but I'll check out your content. What's your vlog channel? This, this is art. I'll check it out. The awesome. Fabulous Leo Wang. Sounds good, Fabulous Leo, 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 Fabulous Leo? Leo Wang. Fabulous Leo Wang, I'll see you on the internet. You too. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Yeah. You know next? Thank you. Molly Burks? Hello. I'm. Hi. Hi, I'm Leo. Um, Leo. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, a. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I I watch uh, your channel for quite a while now. Oh, thank you. Thank you uh, so much. Wanna take a photo together? Of course, of course. Um, do I take a selfie or do you want yeah, to? Uh, I can take it. It's a photo. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Here. Beautiful. Okay. One, two, three. All right. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and um, your yeah, you too. And uh, one last thing though, would you like to collab and maybe um, you know, more friendship, you know, with other creators and me together in yeah, the future? Yeah, you can reach out through my um, website. It's mollybirkofficial.com. Yeah. And there's a contact tab on there. You can go through there. Okay. And then that contacts my team, and they can sort it out. Yeah, and also a business card if that's okay. Oh, I don't have a business card. Oh, yeah, it's for free. Oh, oh yeah. thank you. But thank yeah, um, you're, you're in the, the vlog camera too. Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. questions at the end so think about what questions you want to ask us a little bit later but um, <laughs> let's start with introducing each of ourselves and I don't know when did you when did you start creating content and what was your first video I, I want to hear about that we're going we're going way back yeah so should we start with John start down, with down there, John, there. Woo! AKA Paint. I started on YouTube maybe like uh, uh, in middle school, so like maybe 13 years ago or something like that. A long time. Um, my first video, I made like a. <laughs> 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 I like really, I, I keep having to go back and back. Like, uh, I, made, I made like a pirate movie with my family. I grew up like very. Um, my dad was like a preacher, and so we had a very tight knit, like so? kind of like gone trap family, and we made a pirate movie. That was very clean, and very fun, wholesome. Awesome. Um, you're welcome. Yeah, Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Nathan Zed. Woo! Uh, I just want to say it's weird. I thought being on a band of other legends, all right? It's just like, <laughs> it's kind of weird. People are like, who the hell are you? But anyways, look. So um, my first video. Um, yeah, it was, it's weird. I, I've been making videos, not just on YouTube, but like with my family camera and stuff like that for so long. I would literally just recreate Ryan Higa videos. How to be a how to be, I'm literally just take it word for word and just do it with my sister and just like yeah. have a good time. And I had one, my first video ever on YouTube is just like the most random thing. I think it was literally, I was like, what if you combine the two biggest franchises ever, McDonald's and Call of Duty. And there was just a video called oh, Mc, Mc Call of Duty. And it made no sense. <laughs> You know, I was like 14, 13, you know, and uh, yeah, it's crazy that I went from the Call of Duty to this on the Legends panel, but yeah, all right, thank you. 
Uh, what's up? My name is Kurt Schneider. Woo! Yeah! Hi! Um, I make silly music videos. My first video, uh, actually, it depends on whether it's the first video that's still public on YouTube or not, yeah. because there, there was a video even before that. Um, my first ever video that I made a YouTube channel just to upload this video was I was working at my college's, like, we had a local TV channel, like a channel that you could only watch if you're in one of the dorm rooms on campus, and we kind of wanted to promote it, so I made a silly music video, called, it was called YTV, that was the name of the channel, and I wrote a really kind of cringeworthy song called Watch YTV, and made a YouTube channel just to upload it. It doesn't exist on the internet anymore. <laughs> But Aww. that was the first video. I think that's 13 something years ago. Wow. wow. Yep. Long time. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Lee Quaint. Um, my first video we made was with the Chad. It was in 2004. It was a music parody of Life. Oh, 2007. What did I say? We met in 2004. Oh my gosh, that's right. We met in. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Two, yes. like, that was before YouTube existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 2010, thanks, Chad. Mm -hmm. um, it was a music parody uh, of like a G6. Yes, classic song. Yes. Yeah. And um, that was the first time I've ever made a video. Um, Chad is actually the creative uh, one in, in, the, in the, this partnership, and he kind of just made me crew. It's like, ah, oh. and I didn't want to be in front of the camera at all. I was like, I will be behind the camera. Let me work the camera. I will learn how to edit. I'll make thumbnails. But I just did not want to be in front of it. But um, after that first video, I was hooked. And now I'm in every video. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hank Green. <laughs> 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 you kind of look like him, but yeah, he couldn't make it, but we're very sorry. But uh, no, my name is Chad Wild Clay. Uh, first video was 2010. I wanted to propose to V here, who had been my girlfriend for a long time. So wrote a song, made a music video, had it play at a movie theater where we had our first date many years ago, and. Uh, she said yes, thankfully. But uh, my par my parents were like, "Oh, I want to see that video," so I uploaded it to YouTube, and it ended up getting over a million views. And I was like, "This YouTube thing's pretty cool. <laughs> I kind of want to keep making more videos." So yeah, that's my that's my start. That you truly are um, doing a great thing. Oh, oh thank you. Really matters. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. That. Hi, uh, I know I met three of you and um, already before, and um, I just want to say thank you so much for bringing so much happiness. Like, um, not just you guys, just so many YouTubers already. But um, I just want to ask a, a very important question, like a golden question. So um, I've been watching YouTube for so many years. First off, from Smosh, and then from and uh, and then one for Productions, even Harvard. Welcome for yeah. life, and um, yeah. and Melissa yeah. Franco, yeah. Ava Kutowski, and then you, and then you, and Spy Ninja, and Good Milk Good Morning, and so many more. But I, I have a question though. So um, I know all the YouTubers who, who talked to me before treat me like a family too, and I have this interesting question though. Um, how do I start? Um, I know that throughout in the recent years, you know. Seriously, Logan Paul, but um, Logan Paul, and but also you know maybe other brand new YouTubers. Some are nice, but uh, you might hear some are very bad and you know horrible and controversial. But um, and then we come to the pandemic. So I was this, you know, interesting uh, question though. Do you think any creators like YouTubers, TikTokers, big or small, OGs or brand new, could like any kind of field? work together, is that a, um, what do you guys think? C could we work together in, in a different field? Like, um, work together, like a huge competition, like pre what Preston did, or uh, oh, no, no, no. Mr. B6000, hello, or, um, <laughs> or uh, Kian and JC did that before. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, you gave a great example, so Preston uh, 
Preston just did a video where he invited 50 YouTubers to come play hide and seek. And it was down in Texas at the, the, the football stadium of the Dallas Cowboys. And it was pretty amazing how he put it all, he just invited a ton of YouTubers and everyone came down and I think everybody worked together really well. Um, I wish he would have made it into like a five part series instead of, a, instead of one video, he should have like made five videos. Cause I, I wanted to see what everybody was doing in that video. But yeah, I, almost, almost every YouTuber I've met has been like super friendly. And even when I was coming here as, as a fan and you know, and nobody knew who I was, they were all so friendly. And I think it's because we all start from just the same place. We're all in our bedroom. We're all just sitting in front of the computer. We're kind of dorks at heart, you know? I don't know. So I, I, for the most part, no one thinks like, oh, I'm so great and has big egos. I, I don't know. Yeah. Anybody wants to add to that? I'll just say uh, one thing I like is the, uh, I don't know if anyone saw the Creator Clash where they literally had YouTubers like box each other and fight each other. And uh, my main goal is to one day just get big enough that I can train for two, three, four, five years and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in the face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, like in that regard, there's been more YouTubers working together. Clapping. <laughs> or anti clapping. <laughs> well, one thing to add though is, you know, I watched so many YouTubers, and each of these uh, YouTubers have their own fan base, and maybe, um, so if, if all these YouTubers work together, do all these. Um, I met some of the fans, and um, they, they, they agree that if all YouTubers work together, do, do you think. All of you guys, um, like all the fans, would stick together like like a one gigantic family. <laughs> I think, Mr. yeah, like Mr. Beast is a good example of that. Well, because he's like, well, I'm not just going to use my platform to get views. I'm also going to give tons of money away. Yeah, and also plant a ton of trees, which he got like the whole community together to encourage everyone to plant. Was it two million trees? Yeah. Something crazy. Yeah. But in terms of like banding together as creators to do something good. I think Mr. Beast is the guy, personally. Yeah, or Preston. Like yeah, very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. A few minutes later. Uh, hi, John. Hey. Yeah, uh, hi, uh, sorry, forget about it. I'm Liam. Nice to meet you. And uh, I'm a huge fan of your um, channel, you know. Remember the collab with uh, Lula and Anna Kana? Oh, yeah, I do, yeah. I love that video. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thanks for would you like a photo together? I would love to, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Sweet. But yeah, um, thank you so much, you know. Yeah. Even though the pandemic has hit everyone hard. Of course, yeah. You guys made me so much happy. Thank you. And uh, would you like to maybe collab and maybe become friends in the future? Yeah, do you have a card? Yes. Great. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for this, Leo. And uh, this is my friend, Henry. Hey, hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm not, I actually was to subscribe for a long time, and I also watch your YouTube channel because I've actually made something that can make me feel happy. Because I actually had anxiety until I felt like I'm coming out of the space I wasn't in. Yeah, I was wondering if I could take a picture of this on my Thank you. Um, no. Yeah. By the way, I love singing too. Yeah, that's good. Actually. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Thank yep. you. It's good to meet you. I'm you. I record the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm cool. I record the whole thing. Thank you. Oh, VNC. Yeah, yeah. Oh, VN Chad is over there. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I think we'll just squeeze over there. Yeah. Can you try it? Like, yeah. Yeah, they're great. Matt and Rebecca, they're awesome. Yeah. Like Henry! Oh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Of course. You guys actually, um, they actually have to get going. So okay. You guys can make sure real quick. Cool. Cool. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Yeah, of course, totally. Thank you so much. What's your name? Sydney? Wait, 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 over there. Yeah. No, get, no, get you. Yeah, many years. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. Ladies, I'm going to need you guys all to start getting ready for Chad V. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. We do our best. Come on. That was fun. You guys have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Chad. This is my friend. Nice to meet you, Henry. Cool. You guys, I'm going to need you guys to start exiting the building. You binge watch all those. Oh, that's so cool, man. There's uh, there's Photo quite a few that are. Uh, call me, call me Chad and call me Danny. Oh, come back, Chad. Come back, Danny. Cool. I was wondering if it could be a good thing for me and Yeah, for sure. Because I wanted to meet Danny and he was a fan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Sir, here. Sir, here. Yeah, I'll let you guys. Luke, if you need false, we need to clear this room. We need to clear this room. Everybody be safe. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Sorry, sorry. We need to clear this room. We need to clear this room. Go ahead and get your picture. Thank you. Thank you. V! Oh, let's get a picture, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, for sure. Here's yeah, your, yeah photo, 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 photo. No, no. Can I get a quick picture? Definitely, yeah. definitely. Okay, ready? Ready? Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Hey! Right. Yeah. Thank you guys, guys. So Appreciate it. Have a great day. Yeah. Oh, wait, my stuff. Yeah, but you still, are you still editing? Oh, well, cool. now I have a great day. And now hey, we're going to make content. Um, so, oh, yeah. yeah. Can I just want to let you know, like, you guys like, inspired oh. me. Because that was like fun. Like, uh, it went down to oh. Lost and Found. Wow. Yeah. Do you want to see what's your TikTok? Oh, it's like, I need to like. Oh, yeah. It's like his content. Awesome. I have so much fun. Yeah. I'm going to go to the floor. Yeah, it was. It's like you and a friend though. Yeah, yeah. with a friend. Yeah, it was like a minute video. Yeah, minute and 13 seconds or something like that. Alright, I'm doing my job, man. You guys gotta get going. Yeah, yeah. like, what do we do? And then you just had a lot of fun. Yeah. We really need to wrap this up. Hi, B. This is my friend Hannah. We need to go for you guys. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Sorry. That was one last picture. Thank you. Yeah. He, he's also a fan too. Most of these people are. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Just a quick picture. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. you're good. I gotta close the vlog now. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 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 you got enough so, 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 My photo. Yeah. Oh, my stuff. Yeah. If it's something that I feel like it's too much, I might just call it. Yeah. I didn't buy that much merch this time. Compared I, I, to I, I didn't even buy merch in the last video, dude. Like, uh, but I could say I'd already got the the the, the pre-order before. Oh, me too. I'm to go to the. Sure, where is the line for this? Uh, uh, odd ones up. I think it's either through outside and then go to the arena. It's near the 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 convention parking. I know where it is. I, I thought it was in here. But it was you know where it is? The, the Night of Awesome thing? The, the Spotify Arena? Spotify Arena. They said the line's out, like, it's outside right now. Outside? Oh, okay. Because I saw there was like Spotify Arena line up. Okay. Wait, I know. I it was Not in there, day. over there. Like you have to go outside and then go there. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Was that? You know, I, 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 I do a lot of time lapse. That's my thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. We got one, two, three, four, four, four pictures. Sorry, five pictures. Not bad. Yeah. To make up for Andrew, you have five pictures. <laughs> I love John. I told him I love John it. Was actually, he actually stayed to talk to both of us, so I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. Excuse me, which way is the Spotify arena? Outside? Okay, thank you. I think it's already started, but maybe we could squeeze in.
Yeah. I've heard that word 
have it at some people's first VidCon, is that true? <laughs> so, hi, my name is James. I have a YouTube channel called The Odd Ones Out, and uh, I don't know if some of you have heard of it. Where's he both? Uh, lots happened in the last two years. You know, I, I grew facial hair, I tried boxing for a little bit, that was so so. And uh, what else did I do? Uh, oh, I know, I, I made a Netflix show. I was. <laughs> Honestly, it was, uh, that's why the uploads have been kind of a little sparse lately, but I uh, uh, hope you enjoy the show. Uh, so, today, uh, I wanna, if you haven't seen the, the little announcement video that I made, uh, I showed a little clip of the, uh, the show, a little intro in the beginning. Uh, so, if, we wanna, if you guys haven't seen it, we can play it again. We can pull, play the little intro. His name's Max, the crocodile. Woo, yeah. And <laughs> so James and Max are best friends, and they live in a desert town with a bunch of experiments and scientists that <laughs> just do a bunch of, of crazy. They, they get into a bunch of crazy adventures. These kids. Uh, and one one thing that happens is in school one day, uh, James accidentally drinks his bully, as you do. His bully is a ball of slime, and so. On accident, he drinks them, it happens, it happens to the best of us, and then the bully lives inside James, and he starts possessing him, starts making him do some bully things, and so James and his friends have to perform an exorcism on him to get the bully out of him. So, uh, we have a sneak peek of, of one of the episodes. This is, has not been out yet. This is not, this is just for you, VidCon, alright? This is... <laughs> Has been on the internet at all? This is going to be a, a storyboard of the scene where James's friends try and do an exorcism on him to get the bully out of his body. You know, just normal wacky hijinks that happen in a cartoon show. So, if you want to play the uh, the animatic and just all sit quietly and listen. Yeah. Uh, uh, which hot do you want to start with? Moody Burger or Rick to Fry?
say even though all these crazy times we can get together, share something on the dance floor, and make something beautiful, am I right? Also, give it up for some of your favorite dance content creators, our movement artists, the girl. Every single day, we love you guys. We see what you're doing. Just keep going. We love y'all. We love you guys. It's been such a meeting now. Let's go. Oh, you guys, we oh, and we brought our life together. over a decade now and um, um, the first YouTuber I watched was a Smosh and then evolved with so you know expanded a lot more and uh, this is my third big con the, the, my first one was a 2018 and then 2019 and then you may have heard this thing called Panini or coronavirus thing. Yeah, oh god yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but I was inspired you know like a all these YouTubers, it, they're like way different than mainstream, you know, celebrities and you know, they, in normal life, they're typical Americans as usual, except for Logan Paul or whatever it is, <laughs> but uh, we love Mr. Beast and uh, my idea of, um, you know, meeting, you know, coming to VidCon is well, basically um, getting to meet more YouTubers and uh, maybe, you know, Hopefully, you know, if, if, I, if my career, you know, maybe my future career as a, as a YouTuber, you know, maybe lift up a little bit, maybe I could uh, reach out you know, to the YouTubers I met. Yeah, no, that's actually a great point. Honestly, what I really loved about VidCon so far is how easy it is and accessible all the creators are. And they're honestly, for the most part, I have yet to meet anyone that's been rude. They're all been extremely nice, extremely supportive, and very like open and like very kind to their fans. Because I guess we all know we're, we're creators here. We love video and stuff like that. In 2019, there's this thing called Escape the Night by Joy Graceffa. Okay. All the YouTubers are nice, except for this one, you know, you, you know her. Oh God, yeah, we don't, we're not going to say any names, but you know. I love Joy and uh, Colleen and uh, if you're not smiling, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. I remember a lot of the YouTubers, uh, you know, references. Yeah, like catch lines or like, you know, repeated jokes maybe. Or the odd ones out is, wear your seatbelts or good mythical morning is, hey Red, what's up with Tokyo? What? <laughs> okay, so this is actually what I really, really wanted to ask you about. I noticed ever since this one panel, uh, it was at the How to Make Money through Facebook or something, right? Yeah. Your Facebook video. You were sitting next to me and my pal in the front row, yeah. and the panelists, they were talking, you know, they were talking about Facebook, but at some point it's like, hey, if you want to learn from someone, I highly recommend Mr. Beast. And I remember me and my friend literally audibly heard you gasp very loudly next to us. And I was like, what was that? I was like, is this guy like, this guy's in love with Mr. Beast. So are, is this true? Because I've been noticing. And then, yeah, we can even talk about the panel later. But you seem like Mr. Beast's biggest fan. What do you have to say about that? He is a goddess. 
He's a god or a goddess? God. He is the god. I mean, so how would you say you compare with him and PewDiePie or like another top YouTube channel? Would you compare them or would you say different? I would say um, in real life, I think Jimmy is a very uh, ordinary guy, but he's super nice, you know, a lot of the philanthropy and, you know, giving away free money, uh, you know, idea. And uh, he racks up a lot, a lot of views and uh, remakes a lot of the famous games like the Squid Game or him being Willy Wonka. Yeah, there's like something me and my friends have been saying is that you, he's the only one that can do these sort of extravagant, large scale like projects because yeah, I guess he has the monopoly on it now. Now he has the funds to do it and the team to actually make that mission happen. It's like you really can't go to any other channel to get that type of content. Well, well that is true though, but um, here's what I think about, you know, YouTuber nowadays. You know, in the past, YouTubers are, you know, like the OG YouTubers like Bethany Moda, yeah. Brett and Link, Tyler Oakley, Chris Helbig, and uh, Wonka Productions, Smosh. Yeah, all those. Yeah, yeah. Those, old school. Yeah, super old school. And also Jenna Marvel, Shane Dawson. Early of course, oh my gosh. The real OG right there to me too. They were like, you know, actual family. You know? In 2012 and 2013, there was this thing called the YouTube Space. Uh, YouTube Space is really a place where, you know, YouTubers, you know, do competition a little bit and, and you know, you know, do any uh, shootings or things like that. But uh, ever since the pandemic, they, I don't know what's going on, but uh, Alpha just closed again. They did, huh? Yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing, so like, yeah, that's just crazy. And then since 2014, there was this miners joining YouTube. Some, you know, some are troublemakers. But, uh, and then there's BuzzFeed, Some, many of them are very awesome, you know, I've met them before and, uh, and then there's this thing called TikTok, you know, it's super popular right now and uh, many of the TikTokers, you know, also nice and uh, they want to join the YouTube bandwagon. But then came the coronavirus, which devastated them. Some of the OGs you know, of their past, they, some of the eventually school, which I, I felt very sad. Okay, because I felt like Corona kind of gave a boost to the creator economy in the sense that everyone's at home. Well, almost en encouraged people to view and then also encouraged or inspired a lot of people to even start trying to create. But you're saying you think it actually hurt some of the OGs? Well, also with the, the protest, you know, two years ago. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it was a crazy time, you know, election year, coronavirus, like it literally hit us all you know, different things at once. It really was insanity back then, yeah. Super insanity. Dude, so tell me about the panel day, because we, you were standing at Mr. Beast's panel, by the way. So for those who don't know, Mr. Beast's panel was yesterday at 10 in the morning, but people started making line around 9 when the actual Creator Lounge opened. And you must have been in that line, right? Because you were kind of close to me. You were like even, uh, I think, a few people ahead of me, it seems. So I, I remember we get into this panel, and you're just standing up, just living it up, waiting, excited, pointing out people, pointing out. So how was that yesterday? Can you tell me about what that was like? Like hundreds of people in the room just for this guy and the... The, you, the YouTube, the analyst guy. Right? Yeah. yeah. You saw how many people, creators did you see? I saw you were even pointing it out, and some guy even came by, like said hi to you. Chad from uh, Spy Ninja, oh, yeah. shout out to him, and uh, Wendover Productions, Sam from Wendover. Really? So that's the only two you saw? Um, so far, that's well, who I uh, acknowledge anyway. Yeah, because I remember you were so hype, man. It was so beautiful. Like I said, I, you, I have some clips that you you all get to see because I was like showing, I was trying to get you like I said, I even passed mic, I was like just start preaching and I'll just record you and get it. Maybe I'll just show a video to Mr. Beast, bro. That was, you, know, you were, like I said, I can tell you were really excited. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome, dude. So what do you want to do here at VidCon besides just networking and uh, meeting YouTubers? What else are you excited for? Learn a little bit more how the creators, you know, feel, you know, when it comes to, you know, multiple platforms or, you know, what's on, what's on the media, what's in real life, and also how they, uh, you know, do stuff, or like, you know, start your own businesses, or a lot of creators said, do not give it to him, because I know they're going to miss you. Yeah, I know, I, I agree, like, honestly, a lot of the panels, I've, 
I've learned a lot and I also heard some kind of generic advice, but some things are like just not secrets. Like I remember like, the guy was like, oh, uh, or what Mr. Beast said at his panel actually. Yeah. That he actually, the advice he likes to give is make 100 videos, improve them little by little, and you know, you'll learn. There's no like secret formula, like you do this one trick and suddenly you got millions of views. You really have to get on the craft of actually just making good content. Each YouTubers are very different. Mr. Beast, you know, initially he was like a... Yeah, it was like a commentator. I kind of saw this little video before. Yeah, like Call of Duty. Yeah, all those stuff, you know, back then, since then, you know, the rest is history. I don't know. And it took him until his 1,000th video to actually start going viral. But when we were hanging out with me, yeah, so it's just like that's why I really respect Mr. Beast as well. He's a pretty humble guy. He knows that you have to put in the work, and he's one of those people that has put in the work. He did not experience overnight success, right? Yeah. Even though it feels like it in a lot of people's uh, recollection of how he goes to the star level that he really is. Yeah. Exactly. So some other YouTubers, you know, they. They actually were like explosive back in 2014. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just a lot of time, but then you know, some, you know, kind of bit, you know, you know, goes down. Some, a few. But I want to know before you like. Yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah. Like, you can only imagine, especially if you've been doing it for so long. Yeah. Now, like maybe for example, like, even if they were like a travel channel, like all of a sudden, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Yeah. The virus locking us down at home. Like, how do we really do this? Yeah, it's just been a crazy year. Um, did you actually get to speak to Mr. Beast at all? Or you didn't know Amanda? Well, I didn't know Amanda. Yeah, you're right. So, like, he's not doing a meeting for you. That'd probably be too crazy. Are you by yourself? You're our friend. Charlie Gomez already filled up the entire meeting. So, Mr. Beast. It would be the whole expo. Stand by waiting time 600 minutes. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I guess that's true. It's not 10 hours. It's not 600 minutes. I will work in so thank you so much for talking to me and I really appreciate it. Um, so there's a camera here, there's a camera there. Just shout out all your socials and where can people find you. There's my uh this is hard. The fabulous Leo The fabulous Leo Wang. I'll get that a close-up on all platforms, pretty much. Some and then on Twitter and TikTok. The fabulous LW, just uh, yeah. initial as a exactly. Alright, thanks guys. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the Senior Director of Creator Partnerships at Jelly Smack, Kat Valdez. joining us today. Welcome to this panel. I've got two amazing guests I think you guys are absolutely in love. First to the stage is actor, singer, YouTuber who is fresh off her latest tour. She has a collaboration with Sheen and has over 10 million followers across social media. She's doing the most is Nikki <gasps> DeMartino. Nikki! Nikki! Next on stage joining us, we have the hilarious comedian whose merch line Petty dropped in March, love the name. And when she's not making fun of social media, she's writing, producing, scripted content. Please welcome Charlotte Dobray. Well, okay, so I was an actress. I still am. 
Um, but I got a job at a um, YouTube channel called Inform Overload, and I was a host on that. I was like a writer, host, um, and then I did that for about five years, and then the pandemic hit, um, and I didn't really have any auditions to go to, I didn't really have a creative outlet, and I had tried to start my channel a few times before and failed, because like it's actually like a commitment. Um, but I had nothing better to do, so it's like, okay, let's just dedicate every Sunday to filming. Um, and then I started posting on my own channel, um, and I did that, and the first video had like 10,000 views, and I was like, oh, okay, um, maybe we'll do this again next week. And I did it again, and then you know the next video had like 15,000 views, so then I started dedicating every Sunday to filming three videos, so I could post those three videos throughout the week. Uh, and then I hired an editor, and then pretty soon I was posting every day, and then I quit my job six months later. Wow. And here we are. <laughs> Wow, that's really awesome. I feel like first video during the pandemic, 10,000 views, that's a lot. What was that video? Um, honestly, I think I was just venting about the pandemic. I think I was just like, I had like a really sad thumbnail or something and that got people to click. But you also have to remember that I had I, a job as a host on another YouTube channel with like, I think it had like 1.5 million subscribers at the time. So I was known on the platform before that. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a sign that maybe I should just start taking it seriously. I apologized to my friends because I was like, um, I might need to like not see you guys for a few months. Sorry, I need to dedicate some time to this, but it was worth it. So. I actually have a pretty similar story, but a little different. I actually started YouTube unintentionally with my twin sister 10 years ago, um, which we kept maintaining. And as we got older, we realized, well, we branded ourselves physically together. How are we gonna evolve in our 20s and be able to like try new things and honor ourselves and live in new cities while being able to continue something successful? And then the pandemic hit and I, we were forced not to be able to be together because we had to quarantine. And that's when my channel actually got traction. I dedicated days in the week to film for my channel and prioritized it and it's growing. And then the music career started forming from that. I do music as well and that started during the pandemic. And I've just kind of been doing things by myself now, which is really new and interesting to be at VidCon without my twin sister. So yeah, it's all new, yeah. Nikki? Hi. 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 Oh yeah, I gotta calm down. No, just screw it. Hi, I'm Hi. Nice to meet you. I actually met your your sister Gabby uh, virtually on Cameo. Oh really? Yeah. Oh my god, nice to meet you. And um, just a quick question: Were you on the pretty basic, basic uh, next episode? Yeah, pretty basic. Yeah. It's gonna come out, I think, next week. Next week on Wednesday. And uh, yeah. and by the way, um, come back though. I love Brandy and Alicia so much. I met them yeah. back in March and um Yeah, I love them. They're so sweet. Um but, and also Alicia have like uh, how do I say this? Um she had liked so many of my uh, posts for so many times. Of yeah. all these YouTubers I met. Yeah. Yeah and um and how do I say this? Um, thank you so much for uh, not just Alicia, but I mean, Boss and you, Gabby, and all these YouTubers bring me so much happiness throughout this pandemic. Honestly, that gives me purpose. That's what the point was. Yeah. Uh -oh. Hi, vlog. Yeah, you're on the vlog. Hi. I come vlog. Yeah, and um, also, um, I met a few few of the fans of Alicia, and they want to pass a message to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, to now, from Nally, um, she wants to tell you that um, that you mean the world to her and um, that, that you really help her and uh, you save her. Yeah. Aww, that's and, so sweet. And, and she loves you so much. Aww. And also from Ali, she's a fan page of uh, Bethy Moda, Remy and, and Alicia. She, she I feel like I've seen that account. Really? Yeah. Really? And um, she, she watched her channel for, uh, for a long time now. And, uh, and she loves you too. Oh, and, I love her. And uh, I I love all the YouTubers, not just also you and Gabby together. Yeah, I wish she could have made it. Yeah, would you like a photo together? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, excuse me. You want to take a photo? Yeah. Uh, Hi, Major. Um, this one, this is the photo, is a uh, back. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Uh, how about this one? Sure, yeah, we're going to stand? Yeah. 
I'm like one bazillion percent excited. Aww. Fun fact though, now you, yeah. I made a world record now. I've met 103 YouTubers. I shook hands, oh. met, including Alicia, Zach King, and uh, ZHC, and uh, Smosh, probably, and um, so many YouTubers. And um, I love you all so much. You, and I love that you're vlogging. Yeah, and uh, yeah. you all treat me like a family. No. All you guys are. You what is me? Yeah, I want to stop, you know, when I really become friends with all of you. And uh, I have a crazy dream I want to do YouTube. Would you like to collab in the future? Yeah, I want to see this vlog. Yeah. I want to look up what's going on. I'll be my part. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, thank you so much. Alright. Okay. Yeah. So like, so we, have, we have sound stages in Burbank for a big operation. Yeah. This? No, no, no. Uh, okay, sure. It wasn't. It wasn't focused. 
So I was trying to get in with my friends and brothers. Cute! Yeah. It was nice to see you! But yeah, uh, let, let me see uh, how do I look. Do you want me to go closer? Yeah. That's so perfect. But, uh, but I just want to ask you a question, you know. Yeah, how, how did you, when we met in you know, college, how did you like suddenly just became a YouTube star? Um, I don't know. I just started posting videos on the internet. Some of them popped off and here I am. But yeah, I love making videos, so I think that's why. I think that's You know what's fun fact though? Um, I've met... 104 YouTubers to this day. Wow, that's a lot of people. And you, 105. Oh my god, yay, yeah, I made it. 105. But yeah, um, would you like to maybe stay in touch? And yeah, sure. Thank you for your card. Do you still have my Instagram? Yes, we sure do. I've got everything on the card. Yeah. Perfect. Well, it's nice to meet you. Bye. Bravo. Bravo. As I said, I was going for the now playing record holder for your record player. So I have now playing. Ow, that's not what it is. Um, <laughs> and this was inspired by an old movie theater where they have the uh, letters up on the board. Um, and then right here is a contraption to put the, uh, the album so that it can stand up a little bit more. And that is my Moment of truth. Um, loudness of applause. Yeah, loudness of applause. Okay, let's start. Okay, let's start with you. You're cute. Bravo, bravo. Yes. Oh yeah. So 
Okay, let me get. I'm. I feel like it's a tie. Where's the tie? Yeah. Should we try it again? Yeah. Just the tie. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Becky. Sorry, girls, for a, quite a while. Thank it's, you. So, Thank you. just quick question: Is it true that you guys um, added a, a new member? Recently? Yes, yes, Rachel. Yeah, she's joining us and making videos. Really? Mm-hmm. Would like to take a photo together? Yeah, of course. Excuse me. Uh, uh just hold it and just uh, a photo. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, by the way, it's, you guys are in a vlog too. Okay. Alrighty, one, two, one more. And one more. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I'm it's kind of close to the eyebrow. Thank you so but, much for coming. But yeah, uh, you guys are in the vlog too. Hello! Hello! <laughs> yeah. By the way, thank you so much for, you know, bringing a lot of creativity too. Thank you so much. Do you guys know a Lord DIY? Yeah. I waited for two hours just to meet her. Oh my wow. goodness, wow. Yeah. So yeah, um, may I tell you something crazy? Yes. I have a crazy dream of wanting to do YouTube. Seriously, and uh, would you like to collab in the future? <laughs> yeah, send us an email. Yeah, send me an email. email. And um, yeah, these are. Okay, great. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Let me know. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye, Leo. Hi, girl. Oh my god! Lexi, come on out, Lexi! 
for just a few minutes and allow you guys to just sit in the air conditioning. Can we get a clap for the air conditioning? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you don't know, my name is Michelle Carre and on my YouTube channel, I produce and host a series called Challenge Accepted. Each episode documents me entering a new community, lifestyle, or profession for an extended period of time to see how far and how hard I can push myself. And over the course of my channel, I've gotten to produce over 30 episodes of Challenge Accepted. And they range anywhere from me going to Marine Boot Camp for three days, all the way to spending eight months of my life trying to master chess for a tournament with a prize fund of a quarter million dollars. And I, uh, spoiler, did not win, by the way. <laughs> now, when I meet somebody new and um, they've seen my channel, typically they ask me two questions. The first one is, out of all of your challenges, which one has been the hardest? And this question is really easy for me to answer. It is chess. Chess was absolutely the hardest. I almost lost my mind doing this challenge. It's a great game, though. And the second question people often ask me is, why? Like, why are you continually pushing yourself towards fear? Because I think there's this perception that I, in the videos, am fearless when, completely honestly, the exact opposite is true. Because while all of my videos on my channel give off this essence of accomplishment and fortuitous bravery, all of my videos are rooted in a deep personal fear. And this is actually how we ideate the videos for my channel. So let me give you a few examples. First, I want to be a runway model, but I'm not confident enough. I want to be a firefighter, but I'm not brave enough. And I want to play chess, but I'm not smart enough. Now, what's interesting is once I started approaching content creation on my channel in this way, by actually coming from the place of the fears and even including some of the ugliest, most embarrassing moments in my videos, like this one. This is me at Police Academy after I got pepper sprayed, which I definitely don't recommend, by the way. Um, once I started including these fears in the videos, this was actually when I found that the videos elevated beyond girl who tries things. They became half hour documentaries of personal development that allow the audience to empathize with me 
and even inspire some people to take on a challenge of their own. And this was a huge turning point in my channel because it made me realize I have to include my failures. I have to include my failures in everything I do. Now, if you're sitting here in the audience and you're a content creator, can we raise your hands? Who is the, con I guess we're in the content creator track, so everybody here. Um, I would say that all of you, at one point or another in your content creation journey, if you've you know, experienced even an inch of success, have had to face failure and fear at one point. It may have been quitting your full-time job to pursue content creation full-time and do a career your parents might not fully understand. It may have been trusting an editor with your beloved footage for the first time. Or it may have been launching a product and sharing it with your followers with the sinking feeling, what if nobody buys this? Now, for everybody who has done this, I commend you through and through. And even, actually, to the marketers and investors in the audience, you may have taken a risk and moved towards fear by trusting a bunch of 20-year-olds with your marketing budget and being pleasantly surprised with the results. I am available for sponsorship, by the way. The point is, everything you want is on the other side of fear. Now this is a mantra that is like near and dear to my heart. It's the core of who I am and it bleeds beyond my content into the way I run my business, have personal interactions with people. It's everything and constantly I'm asking myself every single day, how can I move towards fear or is fear even controlling an aspect of my life and how can I move past it? So this weekend I really, really encourage you guys to have these conversations with each other, not just about what is going awesome in your channel, what's doing great, but what are the pain points and struggles that we can learn from and grow together? Oh yeah, oh, well, sponsor me. <laughs> because I realized that building bravery is like a fitness routine. You know, when you do something scary and it works out, Man, is it so easy to keep going, just like it is going back to the gym every single time. But when you do something risky, fall on your face, and even embarrass yourself, it is so hard to get back on the wagon. Um, and something I've been talking to other content creators about is this idea that you're only as good as the views on your latest upload. And I, I don't like that at all. It's something I wanna change. And it requires all of us to move towards that energetically together. So, I want to take a moment for you to ask yourself what fear or pain point or obstacle in your business or personal life is getting in your way? And then ask yourself, what would you do if you were brave? Now, this, this, I know like people don't like activities during these kinds of talks, but just bear with me for a second. So, here are some things that have come up for me when I've asked myself this question on my own content creation journey. So if I was brave, I would reach out to a creator I admire to roast and critique my latest videos and thumbnails. I'm the kind of person, when I meet a new content creator, I wanna you know, put, on, put on my best self and um, you know, show, them, show them what I've got, but also it can be scary to ask for criticism from people you admire as well. If I was brave in my next brand deal, I would push back and negotiate a rate that is actually reflective of my worth in the work that I do. That can be really, really scary to step away from those opportunities for yourself. And in my case, if I was brave, I would cold call the FBI and pitch them on a video. This is something I actually did. I literally called the 1-800 number on the FBI's website and they answered. <laughs> And it actually led to one of the biggest collabs on my channel of all time. I was the first YouTuber ever to be allowed to film with the FBI. And it has 12 million views on my channel now. So I, you know, I was just talking with my friend Olivia earlier today about don't let you be the one that says no. Let somebody else and then move on. So this weekend, with the little time that we have left here at VidCon, I really, really encourage you, like I was mentioning earlier, to have those difficult conversations with the people you admire. What are the pain points? How can we grow together? And how can we challenge the norm? Because that is truly, in my opinion, how you can be brave. Thank you.
there's a lot of creators in this room, but I was just wondering how many of you guys have been a creator for over a year now? Okay, nice. That's a solid amount of people. Anyone over four years yet? Okay, nice, nice. Um, anyone in the double digits yet? We have a 10 year. Okay, we got some. We know who the crazy ones are now. <laughs> Um, but uh, let me back it up. My name is Amanda. I'm better known as Amanda H. Lee online, where I make videos about art and drawing. And I'm currently in my 10th year of making videos, so I'm also one of the crazy ones. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, when you. When you convert internet years to real life years, that basically means I'm considered a grandma online. Um, even though in real life I'm 24 years old, I started making videos when I was 14 in high school, secretly in my bedroom, and I fell in love with it. And I, I was supposed to go to this big business school, ended up dropping out, much to my Chinese parents' disappointment. <laughs> um, but I fell in love with it, and I discovered some really great people, created community. But when my fellow creators first find out that you know I've been making videos for this long, one of the things that they asked me is how I've lasted this long. <laughs> and I'm here to pass on the secret to you guys, okay? Are you ready? So the secret, secret is that I haven't lasted the full 10 years. At least not in the same capacity as when I first started. So when I first started on YouTube, one of the first things that drew me to it was that I could be doing something that I loved, share it with the internet, and find other people who love the same things as me. And, you know, I was able to find people that loved very niche, weird things, like I love stationery, and I didn't know there was so many people who loved stationery as well. And it was really cool. But, um, you know, when, when I kept going, and it, it's like really cool that we were doing this, and, um, Sorry, <laughs> I'm really nervous right now. This is like new for me, but um, if making videos was such a dream for me and it was really awesome, then why is it that so many creators experience burnout? You know, you see so many of your favorite longtime creators eventually fading out, stopping making videos, and they also end up making one of those dramatic, I'm taking a break videos. <laughs> and. I've noticed there seems to be a common pattern, which is that the creator ends up losing passion for the very thing that brought them to where they are, brought them joy, and they also end up feeling guilty about it. It's, it's funny because it's like that saying, you know, do what you love and you won't work it in your life. If you believe that, I respect it, but personally I think a more accurate representation would be do what you love, and you'll pour your whole soul into your work, you'll take things personally, <laughs> you will determine your self-value based on your accomplishments and what you do, you'll have little to no work-life balance, and you'll be able, unable to set any boundaries. I can tell that resonated with some of you guys. Um, but this happened to me around the six or seven year mark of making videos. Up until then, I had been consistently posting videos every week, sometimes twice a week, like a good girl, and almost all overnight almost, it felt very hard to make videos. It was really hard for me to pick up a pencil and draw, even to think of video ideas. So much so that I ended up having to take a month off of the internet and making YouTube videos, which is a big deal for me. In hindsight, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but at the time it was like the end of the world. But it was in that month off that I realized something. I realized that I had been spending six or seven years, so much of my life at that point, cultivating and growing Amanda Rachel Lee, this channel, this internet persona that was such a large part of my identity since I was 14 years old, but I had neglected to do the same growing for just plain old Amanda, the human being. You know, it's hard to get inspiration to make videos or to draw or to make music, whatever you guys do, when you're not actually experiencing life to get that inspiration from. So as your friendly neighborhood internet grandma, I'd love to pass on some words of wisdom to you guys. <laughs> do not let your videos or your channel dictate your life. You're, we all have an online persona and it doesn't mean that who you are in your videos is fake. It just means that what you show in your videos is a small percentage 
of real life. And really take that to heart because the views, the comments, the numbers, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that they don't matter or to not care about them because we all know that they, they do a little bit deep down. But since they are all associated with that online persona, we should only let them affect us in that same small percentage. So this is my strategy because it allows for two things. It means that the negative comments will affect you less and you'll take them less personally. But also it keeps you humble because all of the positive comments will affect you less as well. You know, they don't fit your head. So as we wrap up VidCon and you walk away from this, I know it's probably really inspiring to hear from all of these creators and get into your hustle mode, go home, make videos. Um, and I really hope it's not coming off like I'm bitter against making videos because there's a reason why I came back to making videos after taking that month off. It's because I love it so much. I love the community it creates. I think it's so beautiful. And because I love it so much, I really want all of us to do it in the healthiest way possible. So please remember to make sure to take care of yourself, the human being first, and that way you're able to put out the best possible content for your viewers. Thank you guys. We love you. So Marquez. We love you. Hello everyone, my name is Kenny Layton and I'm head of talent partnerships at Discord. Communities are at the core of our mission, which is why our team is dedicated to ensuring that creators find success on our platform. Recognizing that the communities they create and maintain take time and resources, we recently announced the upcoming expansion of creator monetization with our new premium memberships feature. This allows creators to gate parts or all of their server behind a paid subscription. Premium memberships has been in early testing and is rolling out to creators later this summer. Joining me today is one creator who can speak to the importance of building a community while also sharing more about using the premium membership feature firsthand, Marquez Bradley. Yeah. We love you. We're excited to have you. Uh, can you briefly share a little bit about why, uh, about yourself and the Discord community you've created? Yeah, sure. So as, uh, as I mentioned, I make tech videos. That's the primary focus. I, I review devices, I talk tech, I explain things all in the tech world. Um, and for the last 13 out of the last 14 years, I've mostly thought about building an audience as just trying to be as helpful as possible. Just making, if you're considering buying a phone, just trying to make a good video explaining all the things you need to know so you know about the phone. But lately, uh, I thought a lot more about community, which I think is a little bit different from building an audience, which is, uh, if you think of making content as sort of like a like a fire hose, like in one direction, like an arrow, community is a little more like a web where you know, you're know you talking to them, they're talking to you, but amongst each other as well. So that's been uh, basically what we've used the Discord for, is having everybody in this audience talk amongst themselves. That's a great segue. So in your opinion, what are some of the primary, primary benefits of building a community versus, let's say, building an audience on another platform? Yeah, so platforms obviously have all their advantages. You're able to share things with a lot of people. Um, but one of the, you could call it a disadvantage of a, a building more in general audience is you don't actually get the specific feedback on the questions you might want to ask or the feedback you might want. And that's, that's an obvious benefit of having a Discord channel where they just talk about that specific thing, where I have one just for Easter eggs and videos, or one just for editing, or one just for ideas and brainstorming. So it's more specific in that way, and I think that helps a lot. Um, I read something on the way here. Uh, I think you might already know about this, but it's called uh, the Dunbar number. Anybody know what that is? The Dunbar? Dunbar's Law, something like that. It's like the maximum number of connections that a human brain can make. Like the, think of it as like concentric circles. You can have X number of close friends and then a larger number of friends and then a larger number of associates or whatever. Um, and I think of the Discord channel specifically for us as like a, like a, a center of the core of our audience. So the most engaged, the most interested uh, part of that audience. Didn't think I was going to learn something new on this stage, so thank you. Um, what is your content strategy for a community platform, and how does it fit within your broader platform strategy? 
Yeah, we really just try to take advantage of the fact that that is the most engaged group. So, for example, I might be wondering what what video does my audience want to see next? Is it a phone review? Is it a car? What is it going to be? And I can ask them on Twitter, for example, but that's such a broad audience that the feedback I'm going to get is just chaos. It's just noise. I can sort of dig through it and try to find good stuff, but I might specifically ask part of the Discord that I know is ready to answer that type of question and get much better feedback and direct answers for that sort of thing. So that's, that's one of the biggest things that I found is useful for the Discord and all sorts of stuff like that sort of falls in the same lane. That's great. Um, so for all the creators out there who haven't yet built a Discord server, uh, can you talk about why you're invested in building community and what is the long-term value to that for you? Yeah, so like I said, started off just thinking about building an audience and with being as helpful as possible, an audience is there for what you're helpful with. Um, with the community, you're actually able to engage way more deeply and, and find way more interesting connections and have a lot more fun, I actually think, which is cool. Um, so there's all sorts of niche random interests that we collaborate on and talk about. Um, I don't know if it's strategy so much as it's just way more interesting and engaging than just spitting out content and just on to the next one. Um, so maybe it's mental strategy for me, you know, just having a little more fun with it, but uh, that's, that's how we think about it. It's, it's, it's specific things that people are interested in and we get to talk about amongst ourselves. Yeah, so it's more of those niche things that you get to talk about that you wouldn't be able to talk about in a video. Not, not that I wouldn't be able to talk about it, but that the version of talking about it in that small community is way better than trying to make it fit into this larger thing. Cool. So, speaking of premium memberships, you recently launched within your server. Uh, can you talk about the types of benefits members are actually receiving? Yeah, uh, so I'm gonna go back to the concentric circles. So really big circle, YouTube audience, social media, smaller circle is the Discord that we've, we've had all these people in for a while. I think it's maybe 80,000 people. It's a smaller number, but it's still a pretty big number. So we have smaller channels inside these premium memberships where I'm, I'm talking to them all the time. I'm, getting feedback back and forth. I'm sharing things exclusively in those smaller channels that people can then go out and talk about. Um, but it's, a, it's an even smaller, but even more engaged version of the bigger circle that is the Discord. Um, so that's how we think about it. And we're, we're trying to think of like new ideas and things to do in that, but that's basically how I think of it. A great follow-up. So what is your long-term plan for premium memberships? You said you're talking about it with your team. Um, and what would you like to see the program maybe evolve into even? We're just trying to get more creative, so I know there's tiers. There's supposed to be uh, the ability to divide it into different tiers. Right now we just have one tier. You're either in or out, so you know, it's a one smaller circle for us. Um, but maybe coming up with different, even smaller circles and, and more specific things that we can divide it into. Not that dividing it is the end goal, but it, again, facilitates a better experience when you're talking to people who care about that certain small thing. Um, but other than that, just having fun with it. I think that's, that's the idea, that's why we're all here. We're just trying to have fun. Um, and I think the more ideas we can find that are engaging and fun for the audience and for the communities we're building, then that's a win for everybody. That's awesome. Um, so lastly, what advice would you give to other creators looking to not only grow their audience, but forge that deeper kind of connection with them? Well, I can tell you my strategy, <laughs> which would be as helpful as possible. Um, I, this is this is my first VidCon, believe it or not, and I think uh, a lot of the conversations I've had yeah. are really interesting, and maybe the most interesting thing I've found talking to people for the first time is when you just ask them, like, so, what are you doing? Like, what kind of videos do you make? What are you doing? And a lot of people are just making videos, just here to make videos, and that's cool because I've seen that that's, that's a thing that people want to do, and it's amazing that so many more people have access to doing that, but finding, for finding the why is uh, is almost twice as important as getting good at making videos itself. So I was lucky enough to find my why, which was I just love tech. I'm trying to be helpful. That's what I'm into. Here comes the tech videos for me. Um, but finding the why you make videos and what exactly you want to do uh, is is sort of the guiding light and the reason we're all here. So that that's my advice. It's a little nebulous, but I think it works. Oh, that's great. Well, that's all the time we have today, so thank you, Marquez, for joining us on stage. Yeah. Hi, John! Hello. Oh my gosh, I met you yesterday. Yeah. Um, how y'all doing? Good? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this room is dead. How are you?
Yeah. It has been a very long weekend, um, and it's coming to an end. So just like you know, after this you can leave, and uh, I don't know, get an IV. Have you been drinking a lot? Anyways, um, good to see all of you. I have a little talk um, about myself. This is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, my name is John Kozar. I do musical comedy, and um, this is sort of this is my talk. Uh, it's not about this storybook. It's called John Cozart. That's me. And the horrible, um, no good, very bad, terrible uh, fact that he's not Bogram. <laughs> so, y'all, how many of you are familiar with uh, the the man, the bow? <laughs> right. Enough of you for this to be relevant. For everybody else, I'll give you a little. Introduction. So I'm a musical comedian. I try to be funny and sing it at the same time. Bo is also a musical comedian. He started a little before me, right? He's a little taller. Some would say a little sexier, a little more handsome. He's a little, a little deeper. Uh, some would say funnier. Um, better on stage and not as nervous as I am right now. And that's a problem. It's sort of an existential problem. When I sit down to write, I think like, oh, are there children? Can I say shit? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Okay. Shit. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm, I've been having this problem where I'm like, I'm not this guy, and it's it's been impeding my work. So hopefully, um, I can help you guys out <laughs> with this problem I've been facing. It's sort of like in in all of the universes that exist, I just so happen to be in the one where I am not. Bo Burnham. It's rather inconvenient. Um, I'm just sort of like this Charmander person and, you know, oh look, Johnny Soar is evolving and then Bo Burnham is literally walking around being a genius, winning Pulitzers and Oscars and BAFTAs and whatever else. It's uh, bad. How, how many of you have seen Amadeus, the movie? Oh my gosh, y'all have good taste. It's a great movie. I love it. Uh, but basically the premise is there's Mozart. Literally it's Mozart. That he's like ordained by God to just be a genius and all he does is transcribe music that just comes out of his head. Um, and then there's this sad character <laughs> named Salieri who's just like this bitter old man who's like, why am I not God's chosen genius? Like why, when I work, it comes out shitty and when he works, it comes out brilliant. Um, <laughs> that's my problem. Um, so in a world where there's only a handful of geniuses, a handful of Mozarts. What do you do if you're not Mozart? You don't have to answer that. The answer is you kill Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so what do you do if you're not Mozart? The answer is you become a YouTuber. Okay. Um, also, not the greatest answer. You teach. You become a teacher. Okay, that was a joke. That's okay. That's okay. Just take it a pulse. Um, you depend on alcohol and you make an only dance. <laughs> So, jokes aside, I'm going to try to give some real advice. Um, when you're feeling bad about yourself, maybe, maybe you have the bar set a little too high. So for me personally, when I sit down, I'm like, okay, today is the day where I write something as good as Bo Burnham. Um, and it's a rather, like, big-brained goal. Um, and it's not, what it actually leads to is me just not doing anything, right? I'll just like color in my coloring book and be SpongeBob from that one episode. Um, and I, I need to like, in those moments, what you need to do is take the bar from up here and just put it literally on the ground as low as it can go and be like, okay, today's not the day that I'm a genius. Actually, all I have to do today is write anything. I can make a piece of shit today. That's kind of what <laughs> needs to happen. And then tomorrow, maybe you can take that piece of shit and make it pretty. <laughs> Is that resonating? Did I keep going? Um, so it's like, yeah, just sit down, put your phone away, try to be bored, be comfortable, not being a genius, and get something on the page. Um, and I'm speaking as much to like future me as you all right now. I'm like, hopefully I'm watching this in the future, I'm probably procrastinating. Get to work, you know? Close the computer. Um, I love this quote by James Clear. He's the guy who wrote Atomic Habits. Um, and he said, we cannot predict the value of our work, the value our work will provide to the world, and that's fine. It's not our job to judge the work, it's our job to create it, and to pour ourselves into it, and to master our craft as best we can. Which I love, I love that, it's so generous. Um, also it helps to realize that art making is not a competition, 
It's not zero sum, like I can exist and Bo Burnham can exist and we can both make our own thing and that's fine. Um, I might be like chicken nuggets, you know, and he might be a steak dinner. And those things can both exist and you don't have to try to be a steak dinner all the time. Because no matter how hard I work, I'm still going to be a chicken nugget. I will never be a steak dinner and that is fine, okay? Do I sound desperate? Because I am. Um, so a show of hands, you don't actually have to show your hand yet. I will explain. Um, so a show of hands, here's another example. Um, if you see two DVDs on the shelf, one is High School Musical 2, one is Schindler's List. You know, how many of you, maybe cheer, how many of you are watching High School Musical out of those two? <laughs> and Schindler's List? <laughs> okay, well congratulations, you won. All the rest of you, how dare you? <laughs> we are doomed to repeat the history we do not study. <laughs> um, I think genius is a little overrated, frankly. I relate to people who struggle with their work, who struggle to get things onto the page. It comes out, you can feel it when somebody's kind of like desperately cloying for attention to be a little better, and frankly, I think it's refreshing. That's all I'll say about that. Um, so yes, the world needs insight, right? But the world also needs John Cozart's After Ever After, right? Um, the world needs Bo Burnham's 8th grade, it also needs John Cozart's After Ever After 2. <laughs> um, and I guess I will leave you with this idea that, uh, this is one of my favorite quotes from Bo Burnham. Um, I'm just gonna read it really quickly and then I'll leave you guys. John, you rock. And you were really, really cool and thank you. Your inner saboteur will tell you that, nah, you suck. But just know that I think you're really kinda hot. <laughs> kinda weird looking, but... Mm, I don't know, I kind of, I don't know, you're just, uh, you doing anything later? Oh, I love you. Let's make out. I mean collab. All right. Also, don't feel like you need to make TikToks just because everybody else is. You do you, bro, and you're kind of hot. Wait, don't go. I was Jay Kane. I like to joke with my best buds. Sleep tight, buddy. That's what we're not. That's what we're not. Um, so, thank you guys so much. One more thing to not just be a dick, um, but it does feel often like I'm trying to create something and I'm working twice as hard as somebody who might be Bo Burnham but comes out very easily. I'm working twice as hard to make something that's like half as good. And all I will say is that when I make my work and I put it out in the world, sometimes that work is people's literally favorite thing in the world. They're usually middle schoolers. That's okay, though, <laughs> because that work is important, too. And, uh, yeah, John, get back to work. Thank you guys so much. Good night. <laughs>
see amazing artists like the Trills. Let's hear the Trills. They're backstage. I just got to meet them. They're really, really cool. You're here to see amazing artists like Kira Kosterin. That's what I thought. And um, I also heard a cute Kurt Hugo Schneider is in the building. That's what I was talking about. And uh, the one and only SZA. Musical acts this evening. I haven't seen you guys have a great time at VidCon this week. Isn't it awesome to be back? It's so good to be back. incredible singers but tonight you guys you guys get me so hope you guys enjoy it Here we go.
you know? Yes. So you have. Well, you got us sometimes. If I don't. All right. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for playing Never Have I Ever. We appreciate you, and thank you so much for performing earlier. It was incredible. Give it up for the trills, everybody. VidCon 2022, thank you for a great time during these four days. I got to meet all my hairy YouTubers. Shout out to Leo for actually giving me this good experience and buying my badge. If he didn't do that, I would not be here. I'd probably be at home. Stuck at home actually. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vicon, again. Thank you for the memories. Thank you for the fun memories, actually. And meeting all these YouTubers that I will post later on, on my Instagram and also videos on my Instagram and YouTube. But yeah, so long, Vicon. I'm gonna miss you until next year. Hopefully I can come back. And more YouTubers. And more YouTubers too, to me. More OG YouTubers, but yeah, thank you and peace out.